In this portion of the video, we're going to cover the palpation of the tarsals, the metatarsal joints, and then the metatarsal phalangeal joints. We're going to start along the medial aspect of the foot. And so what we're going to do is use that osseous landmark, that navicular tubercle that um, is, is relatively easy for us to identify here. So here's that medial malleolus, and if I go kind of obliquely, the, that first bump I feel here, that's that navicular tubercle. What I want you to do is I want you to take that tubercle here, here is hers, and we're going to pinch on the top here. This is that palpation of the navicular. So we're going to do an A to P and a P to A glide of that navicular. The next tarsal then is the cuneiforms. So there's three total cuneiforms and the cuneiforms form an arch with the middle cuneiform being what's called a keystone, meaning that it's wedge shaped and it uh, adds structural integrity to that arch. We'll start again by finding that navicular tubercle here. And then we're going to find the meta first metatarsal here. And we'll follow that first metatarsal proximal until we feel it end. And then we'll follow that navicular until we feel it transition. And between those two marks lives that first cuneiform. So here. Again, an A to P and P to A palpation here. We'll use that second metatarsal and we'll follow it up, move our finger over, and now I'm on the second cuneiform. Now it's important to remember that since this forms an arch, I'm not going to be able to palpate that inferior or plantar aspect of it. Instead, I'm going to be able to move kind of the the second and third cuneiform is a pair almost. So here is that third cuneiform. I'm, I'm following that third metatarsal up, moving my finger over, and palpating. That leaves quite a bit of space on the lateral aspect of the foot here. Remember that we can use our hands and move down the lateral aspect of the foot and find this osseous landmark here, which was the styloid process of the fifth metatarsal. And we said that if we found that styloid process of the fifth metatarsal, we could fall off and land on the cuboid, which is a relatively large tarsal, and it articulates with two metatarsals. So if we move those metatarsals proximal, we know that that cuboid articulates with all of those, and we should get a, a fairly decent amount of motion here, A to P and P to A, at that cuboid. That's all of the palpations for the tarsals. We'll move on to the metatarsals. For the metatarsals, we're simply assessing a shear between uh, the metatarsals as we move across the foot. So what I want you to do is find that second metatarsal, find the first metatarsal, and then you will shear between the two. Move over, shear, move over, and shear. Okay, all the way along the foot. The last palpation is the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Now I'm going to pick on the first metatarsal phalangeal joint because I said it was important for us to be very, very familiar with this joint from a palpation standpoint so that we can hopefully impact hallux valgus in its early stages and the patients that come into our office. We're going to provide a long axis distraction here. So you'll see that I've got the phalangeal portion of that metatarsal phalangeal joint. I'm going to distract, and you can see that joint gap here. I'm going to provide some circumduction. I'm going to provide an A to P, and a P to A assessment of motion, and then a medial to lateral and lateral to medial. 
Now you can go through and do these on all of the metatarsal phalangeal joints, but like I said, I really want you to get good at palpating that first metatarsal phalangeal joint. This was the palpation of the tarsals, metatarsals, and that metatarsal phalangeal joint. All right, so the last palpation of the foot then is the palpation of the subtalar joint. When we palpate that subtalar joint, the first thing I'm going to do is have my patient bend her knee, and then I'm going to provide a little bit of dorsiflexion here by putting her foot against my stomach, just like this, okay? And I'm going to use my hands here and interlace around the heel, just like this. So here's the outside hand, and then I'm going to interlace here. What that does, it, is, it allows me to put my, the heels of my hands around the heels of her foot. So I've got that little bit of dorsiflexion here. There's that contact. We're going to do an A to P palpation, so I'll exaggerate it. It looks like this. So we'll lock down. A to P, and then P to A, again, exaggerating, it looks like this, P to A, medial to lateral, I'll exaggerate again, which is this, and then lateral to medial, again, exaggerating, if this is difficult for you to feel, you can use that same contact and then draw a figure eight with that heel. What you're doing here is coupling all of those motions, A to P, P to A, lateral to medial, medial to lateral. And you're coupling all of those motions and just assessing, the, do all of those motions exist by drawing a figure eight with that heel? Okay. This is the palpation of the tibio joint.